Today's video is all about value versus mid-level performance. We're taking a look at the $599 M4 Mac Mini base model against the M3 Pro MacBook Pro. Now, why are we taking a look at this? Well, I happen to own both of these units, and a lot of you have been asking for me to do a comparison against the M4 Mac Mini base model against the M4 Pro Mac Mini. Now, until we get to that point, I wanted to see with what I have, how does the M3 Pro MacBook Pro compare to the M4 Mac Mini? Because it's not too much less powerful, I guess we could say, than the M4 Pro. So first we're gonna talk about the difference in the hardware in the machine, then we're gonna talk about synthetic benchmarks, and then we're gonna talk about real world use when it comes to video editing, because if you're new here, I am a filmmaker, content creator, and I use these computers mostly to do video editing. I don't utilize the graphics card that much when it comes to video editing, but I film with high-end cameras like the Red Komodo 6K and this Blackmagic 6K. This video is being edited on the M4 Mac Mini. So the codecs I deal with can be intensive, but the M4 Mac Mini handles them just as well, for the most part, as my M3 Pro. The M4 Mac Mini has 10 CPU cores for performance, 6 efficiency, and 10 GPU cores, and the M3 Pro MacBook Pro has 12 CPU cores, 6 performance, and 6 efficiency, and 18 GPU cores. So on the GPU front, the M3 Pro MacBook Pro has a lot more GPU going on than the M4 Mac Mini. The reason the base model M4 Mac Mini is getting so much love online right now is just with the performance, the RAM upgrade to 16 gigs, and the price. For $600, you really can't beat what you're getting for that price. I mean, at release, the version of the M3 Pro that I have, the 12 CPU, 18 GPU, and 18 gigs of RAM, was almost four times more expensive than the base model Mac Mini. And after using the Mac Mini for over a month now, the performance for what I use it for isn't that much better, especially when I'm not really using the GPU that much. So when it comes to ports, the M4 Mac Mini has three Thunderbolt 4 ports on the back. It has an Ethernet port, an HDMI out, and it also has a power port. Then on the front, it has two USB-Cs and a headphone jack, whereas the M3 Pro MacBook Pro it has a total of three Thunderbolt 4 ports. It has a power in port that's different from what's on the Mac Mini. It's MagSafe on the laptop. And then it also has an HDMI out and a headphone jack. But what the M3 Pro has that the Mac Mini doesn't have is an SD card reader. Now, for me, that isn't really too important. I'm actually using the SD card reader in my M3 Pro for storage. I just leave this specifically made SD card in there and just gives me an extra 512 gigs of storage. I did a video on it. I'll put a link in the description below. So I wouldn't really use it that much on the Mac Mini. I also... Most of my cameras aren't using SD cards at this point, and most of my readers that I need for the memory cards like CF Express Type A, CF Express Type B, or CFast 2.0, most of those readers have much faster SD card readers anyways. But then of course the M4 Mac Mini, it's not a portable machine. That is a desktop, and it doesn't come with a keyboard, it doesn't come with a mouse, where the MacBook Pro does have a really great 14-inch display built in, amazing quality, it's got a built-in keyboard, it's got a built-in trackpad, so you are paying for those upgrades. So another really big difference is going to be in the actual read and write speeds of the internal SSD of the M4 Mac Mini versus the M3 Pro. The M3 Pro blows the internal speeds of the M4 Mac Mini away, and it's been one of the big problems I've been talking about with the M4 Mac Mini. The read and write speeds are just so much slower than even upgrading to 512. Now in the M3 Pro, I have a one terabyte drive. So you are gonna get a little bit better read and write speeds on that drive than a 512. But it's interesting just how much faster it is compared to the M4 Mac Mini. It's pretty insane. And so it makes me wonder, is that gonna be kind of the next thing Apple starts working on fixing in future base model computers? Or are they doing this to try and get you to upgrade your internal memory? Man, we're looking at a severe slowdown in the base model 256 gig configuration compared to even jumping up to 512, which is pretty insane. It's why a lot of people, when I did my videos discussing the OWC USB 4 drive and how the speeds are a little bit better than the internal drive. A lot of people were in denial until they started realizing, I'm talking about the internal 256 base model SSD. I'm not talking about a 512 or a one terabyte. 
So it's another reason why you pretty much need an external SSD with the M4 Mac Mini, where on my M3 Pro MacBook Pro, I actually don't use an external a lot. I typically bring them on my trips, especially if I'm filming, that way I don't have to leave my footage on the computer. But a lot of the times when I'm editing, I'll actually just bring my footage and leave it on my computer while I'm editing, just so I don't have to have an external drive attached. And that's one of the benefits of getting a bigger hard drive in these MacBooks. Now, when it comes to synthetic benchmarking, I put both of these machines through Geekbench. And as you can imagine, when it comes to single core performance, the M4 actually does beat the M3 Pro because it's the newer chip. But when it comes to multi-core performance, the M3 Pro is beating the M4. It has more performance cores. It makes more sense. And then when it comes to GPU, the M3 Pro beats the M4 by a lot. But those are just synthetic benchmarks. What happens when it comes to video editing? Now, I use DaVinci Resolve as my main editor because DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut 11 both utilize the system performance to get the best performance out of the machine it's using. So that's why I really recommend those two. And with Premiere, it's not that I don't recommend it, but you need a beefier setup to really run it and use it to its fullest. When it comes to editing 6K footage on both machines, I put them both on a 4K timeline, and when you do basic color corrections, both machines can actually handle the 6K footage from my red and my black magic. But then when I start using plugins that require using the graphics card, the M4 Mac Mini does not get smooth playback, and so I have to bring it down to 1080. Now, depending on what the plugin is, the M3 Pro can handle it, but when I use something like Dehancer, which is a film emulation plugin, it plays it back, and it's not 100% smooth. Can you deal with it? Yeah, but for me, I'd rather it be smooth. So I do still bring it to a 1080p timeline. So right there, that was a really big deal for me that on both machines, I still have to bring them into a 1080p timeline. Then when it comes to using fusion effects, again, it depends on what the fusion effects is, but on a 1080p timeline, the M3 Pro handles it. It's not really a big deal, but the M4 Mac Mini really needs to be brought down to a 720p timeline for smooth playback at that point. So that's showing where the better graphics card does make a difference because Fusion does utilize heavy graphics. So now let's talk about exporting footage. Now, this is where the GPU is going to help. I took a timeline that was in 4K, exported the video in 4K, and it had footage from my 6K Red Komodo and the 6K Black Magic. I went to export it and first, on the actual M3 Pro MacBook Pro, I'm reading right here, it exported that eight minute video in three minutes and 40 seconds, so pretty quick. And then the M4 Mac Mini did it in four minutes and 13 seconds. So right there, we've got about a 33 second difference. Now, this is where you gotta kinda weigh things out. So the big difference here was the export time. And of course, if you have a much longer video, you're going to see a better time savings on the M3 Pro, which means you'll see a better timing savings on the M4 Pro as well. But for me, when I'm exporting a video, I tend to go do something else. It's just not the biggest deal for me when it's not like it's a 50% time savings. It's a percent. It's noticeable, especially going to be noticeable with longer videos. But in these situations where most of my videos are between 8 and 12 minutes, I don't know how big of a deal that's going to be that makes me really want to pick up an M4 Pro Mac Mini. Now, I think I will at some point just to test things out. But man, doing these tests kind of put things into perspective of how great the value of the M4 Mac Mini is for $600. I mean, you can pick up two of them for less than the price of one M4 Pro base model Mac Mini, which is pretty insane. So the question is, is Apple gonna offer this kind of value in a computer in the future? Or is this kind of like the M1 MacBook Air where the first release is the biggest value and then it's not as big of a deal in future releases? I don't know. I don't have the answer to that, but it makes me appreciate the M4 Mac Mini even more. So what do you think? Were you expecting a bigger performance difference from the M3 Pro, MacBook Pro, to the M4 Mac Mini? You can pick up an M3 Pro MacBook Pro at a much bigger discount a year later, but it's crazy to think this computer's only a year old and the M4 Mac Mini is keeping up with it in a lot of ways. So let me know what you think in the comments below. If you got knowledge and value out of today's video, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos on the channel. And until next time, my name's Jeff Fagan. Thank you for joining me as always, and I will catch you in the next video.